Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm your dear friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Today, our topic of discussion will be putting health in your own hands. And that's what we all gotta do. We gotta take it into our own hands because this is our one body. Only we know how it feels and what we can do to make it feel better. And we have every right to do so because it's our one body. What I would like you to take away from today's discussion is the idea that simple changes bring huge results. Today, I would love to introduce to you our dear friend, Judy Strickler, she is a former RN, and I think she's always going to be a nurse to somebody somewhere in the world, and she's an NMD with the Juice Plus company. Welcome, Judy. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, so, you know, we have a slide that shows how beautiful you are with all those beautiful colors of fruits, and I just want you to tell us a little bit about who you are. Oh, thank you, Wendy. I am so excited to be here. You know I love Hawaii. Yes, I know. And this is like my second home. That's what I tell people. But I just am so grateful that I can come here and share some information with all of your friends here in Hawaii. Uh, I am a wife of 42 years to my husband. I, we have four children. We have uh, four in-laws and then three grandchildren. I also am a nurse, and I spent 25 years of my life in the nursing field, and I retired 21 years ago. Wow, how impactful. I bet you, you know, you, can you remember all your patients? <laughs> I can't, but I can tell you I had lots of fun with them. Well, that's the main thing, and you know, that's a process of healing. Mm -hmm, it's having fun, not just being there and administering whatever your doctor says you need to give right. them, but loving them and right. showing them your heart, and that's what actually heals. Oh, absolutely. The power of your heart and your love will absolutely. hear, and so that's really, really important. Yes. So the next slide says to us, the choice is yours. So can you walk us through that, and what, does you, what do you mean by this statement, the choice is yours? Yeah, the choice is really yours, and I have, you know, on my slide, um, if you knew that there was a way to get well and stay well, would you make that choice? And then, the next major step, would you do what it takes? So, actually, every day we have a choice, don't we, of what mm -hmm. we do every day. Mm -hmm. uh, choice to get out of bed, right. choice to go to work, choice right. to have fun, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk mostly today about the choice of the food you put in your mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you put in your mouth either helps you or it harms you. Right. So you really have to think about those choices that mm -hmm. you're making. Wow. You know, I mean, I also, what once put before me was, if you knew the hurricane was coming, are you just gonna sit in that house and wait for you to get hit, or are you gonna take precautions? So no different than a storm, your health, Absolutely. it's the same idea, it's the same relationship. So you know your health, I mean, we're taking a gamble by just saying, oh, we're just gonna do as I'm told, mm -hmm. and not know anything further than that. Mm -hmm. And if you just did that, mm -hmm. is that gonna harm you? Is it gonna benefit you? Right. So we have choices, and that's what you're saying, is Right, correct? right, and so a lot of times I think we say, well, I'm just gonna do this today. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna have one of those today. And maybe that one is what's gonna put you over the edge and lead you into a disease. Mm -hmm. So I wanna know, on the next slide is a whole bunch of verbiage. It says, what were some of the references that led you to your true north? Okay, okay. so as I grew up on a farm in Kansas and mm -hmm. my parents taught me, of course, about God, and I read in the Bible one time in Genesis that God said that he had made, made all of the seed-bearing plants for us for food. and I thought, wow, and he made them before he made us, so I was like, wow, he must have known what our body needed to stay well. And then as I went on to my medical field, I heard that Hippocrates said, food is your best medicine, and medicine is really your food. Exactly. And we don't treat it like that anymore, we treat it as fun, mm -hmm. you know, like we're going to have to have fun and just eat something. Um, and then, you know, the last part, Thomas Edison said that the doctors of the future would be interested in the human frame and not in medicine and not in drugs. And he, he invented the light bulb. What does he know about nutrition? Mm -hmm. But even back then, everyone knew that it was good food that made you healthy. Right. And right. so 
um, those were some of the people, and I had a lot of mentors in my past mm -hmm. that I uh, looked up to. Uh, Dr. John McDougal helped me get started, mm -hmm. uh, Joel Furman, mm -hmm. um, Chef AJ. I could just go on and on. Dr. Ethelston, mm. they all, and Wigmore way back when said you've got to eat those f real foods, the raw foods, the sprouted foods, the foods that have life in it. That's all only thing that'll give you life. Mm -hmm. And if it's dead food, why would you eat it? Right. I used to tell my kids, if it doesn't rot or sprout, throw it out, <laughs> right? If a self-respecting bug won't eat it, why would you? Right, right. <laughs> you know, so before you found your true north, did you try other paths? You know, like everybody has a diet of one sort or another, like, oh, you got to do this, you do this, and you have the fountain of youth. You do this, and you'll, you know, you'll lose 20 pounds a day. So did you have another path before you found your true north, you know, and to direct you in your health journey? That's kind of funny, uh, Wendy, because I had lots of different paths I tried. <laughs> I tried lots of different things because I kept looking for the answer. You know, when I got out of uh, medical school and started working in the hospital, I realized then that this wasn't the answer to health. Mm -hmm. It's not drugs and chemotherapy and radiation and all that stuff. It, was, it went back to the food. So yeah, I tried everything from raw diets to fasting 10 days on water. I did the cabbage soup diet. I'm sure mm -hmm. everybody tried that once, right, mm -hmm. to lose a little weight. I uh, did the paleo, I did the keto, I did, you know, the standard American diet, right. what most people eat. Right. But until I came back, I, caught, I tried even handfuls of vitamins. Mm. And, and we don't have a vitamin deficiency, do we? We no. have a whole food deficiency. Exactly. So I was able to come back to the whole food. It's like one of my friends said, uh, Judy, go back to the farm mm -hmm. and eat what you ate when you grew up on the farm. Right. So You know, you were so blessed. I mean, I, 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 I know that back in the day, you thought, oh, we have to work so hard. The other kids aren't doing this dirt and farm thing. But you know what? When we look back, how blessed were we that we have the foundation of great health instilled in us from the time we were young. Yes. And so that's the difference with the generation now. They're not living on a farm. Yeah. You know, if you truly ask a kid, hey, what's this, and you have a tomato in your hand, mm -hmm. they may not know what the tomato is because they only know it as salsa or as ketchup. <clears throat> And where it came from. Right. They, they have no idea. That's a perfect lead into a story mm -hmm. that I'll share with you. When I left the farm, I was very healthy. Mm -hmm. we had 12 years of perfect attendance and all that. But I went to school and I found those golden arches. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> right. And, and I was so amazed that I could have food without killing the cow, baking the bread, peeling the potatoes, and here was a meal. But that food led me down a path to illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, you know, that's why it's so important to take your health back. And that's exactly what we want to share with all of you out there, is it's so important for you to just understand the simple rules of how we can take our health back. Baby steps. Baby steps. And uh, that's the first thing I want to say, is just uh -huh. baby steps. Whether you're going to, and, and it's not a diet that we want to choose. No, it's a it's lifestyle. lifestyle. Absolutely. Right. And so Absolutely. that's what we, you know, we really want to impress uh -huh. upon our audience today. Uh -huh. So our next slide says, prove it. Okay, oh, yeah. so tell me about the importance and the urgency in your search to keep your family healthy. You knew better. Now, how hard or how easy is it to get your people in your household to follow what you now know? Well, it's not real easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little complicated. You have daughters. You understand what <laughs> right, I'm saying right. to you. But, um, yeah, I knew that my mom was right, my grandma. My grandma used to say, you know, eat your fruits and vegetables, and she would peel a carrot every morning mm -hmm. before breakfast, and she'd eat that to help her uh, keep her eyesight. She said, these are good for my eyes. And my other grandma went to a healing resort uh, several times and would bring special water home to drink. So they were kind of in this, so I guess it's in my blood, to do have this passion to help people get well and stay well. Mm -hmm. So um, now we know that there's over 4,500 studies that confirm that almost 75 to 80 percent of all diseases are caused by either what we do eat or what we don't eat. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to take care of it. What, what led me to want to really dive into this is my husband's daughter died at 21 from cancer, mm -hmm. and I did not want to bury any of my children, and so I was struggling at the time. I had four teenagers. Mm -hmm. I really was getting pretty desperate to find a way that they would eat the good things that I made. Mm -hmm. There were times they would eat it at home, but when they were gone, you know what happens. Right. It's that pizza and beer probably, right? right? It's right. not Brussels sprouts and cauliflower. 
Right. So, you know, um, I always bring my buddy with me, this apple. And, you know, this is the food. This is fast food, guys. The fastest food you're going to find. Right. Yeah. Over 10,000 nutrients and vitamins oh, within one apple. And if we were hungry or are hungry, just pick this apple up, eat it, and it'll suffice. Yeah. It'll take the hunger pains away. It'll make your body smile and be very happy on the inside because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. by stewarding your body from the food from the earth. And the secret about that is, Wendy, I love that you brought that apple, is <laughs> it's not just vitamin C. Mm -hmm. It's all of those nutrients in synergy together, working exactly. together that have such a powerful punch in your body to make you well, to keep you well, to help detoxify your body. Right. So, Judy, what was the final point that proved to you that your mother was right? <laughs> the final point <laughs> is when I finally got away from all those crazy diets, went back to the farm, and started to eat mostly fruits and vegetables. That's all, you know, pretty much what I ate, a lot of starch. But I saw how I felt. I saw when I uh, found some plant powders and was mm -hmm. able to start putting those in our body, more concentrated. It changed my children's appetite. And I was just amazed because I know about metabolic programming. You know what that mm -hmm. is. Uh, if you uh, drink a lot of caffeine, you want caffeine. If you eat a lot of sugar, you want sugar. <laughs> and if you eat, you know, cocaine, heroin, whatever it is, whatever you put in your body, you crave that. Wow, when I found out that loading your body with all these plant powders made you start craving fruits and vegetables and helped stop, start detoxifying your body and healing what was going on in your body, I knew I was onto something. And I wanted my children to know this and take it forever. Mm -hmm. And our family has been able to do that for over 21 years. You know, there are so many gurus out there on health. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes it's not easy to, who do I listen to? Mm -hmm. Which one do I listen to? Is that real or who sponsored it? So it gets very difficult for the average person very. out there. You know, I know that you told me a little bit about Bob Goff mm -hmm. and um, what an impact he's made on your life. Can you just share a little bit about him and what he's done with you in your life? Yes, I love Bob Goff, and I was <laughs> blessed to meet him this year in person, oh, so that him. picture is very special in my office. But he talks about love, how we're really here to love each mm -hmm. other, and God has given us all a passion, mm -hmm. uh, a mission here on earth, so mine certainly is to help people heal themselves, mm -hmm. get well, and, and stay well. But Bob Goff said several things that really made an impact on me. You know, he said, you love, that love does. And you can't just love somebody, you have to do something, mm -hmm. you know, you have to move your feet when you pray, okay? Right. And so the other thing is that he um, said that was powerful. He said, I used to be concerned about not succeeding at something I thought was very important. Mm -hmm. But today I'm worried about failing at what is really important. Wow. And, and so I, I think that he made me really start thinking about what true love is. Mm -hmm. If I had this knowledge, I had to share it with someone, yes. and I couldn't keep it to myself anymore. Wow. Sounds like the Aloha spirit to mm -hmm. me. And so that's why, you know, we're so blessed here in the land of Aloha. Yes. And we live with Aloha, and when we share that Aloha, it comes back. And even just to say Aloha, with all the goodness mm -hmm. of it, what it means, I love you, hello, goodbye. Yes. It just means everything is just a breath of life. Mm -hmm. And that's what we breathe upon each and every one of our visitors as well as our family members. And if we can spread more of the aloha throughout the world, I think or I know that the world will be healthier and happier. And that's what our goal is, Absolutely. to just continue to spread that, that, that mission, I should say, mm -hmm. of aloha. So what do you mean that you turn your, your misery into ministry? That's so important mm -hmm. because um, my min my misery was working in the sickness industry. I wanted to get out of that and go into the wellness mm -hmm. industry. And I was blessed to do that about 21 years ago. And so I have just, I wake up with a smile on my face knowing that I'm going to improve someone's health. And so I want to just keep doing that every day. And you know, in, in, in the Bible, Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me. I think about that because aren't we starving to death? Aren't people starving to death with what they're eating? Mm -hmm. They're really, truly hungry. You know, I was in prison and you visited me, but we all know people that are in a disease prison, mm -hmm. right? Or poverty prison. Mm -hmm. We have so much to offer them if we just teach them how to eat a few simple things. And I'll get into that a, le a little bit later, but I'm telling you, there is a way that we can give hope to people mm -hmm. and not be so depressed and so desperate in, in this life. 
Wow. You know, and actually, so what you're saying is just take your health into your own hands. Absolutely. And, you know, we go around saying take your health back, take your health back. People are wondering, what do you mean by that? I mean exactly that. If this is your one body, your one temple, take care of it. Mm -hmm. Steward it right. Do the yeah. right thing. Eat and drink the right things Absolutely. because your body will respond. You ca talked about metabolic, metabolic programming. Mm -hmm. That's the scientific word. The other word is addictions, mm -hmm. right? And so, yes, mm -hmm. do you want to be addicted to good, healthy food? Or do you want to be addicted to the other types of food? Mm -hmm. And so the more we learn and understand what we eat will matter on how our body feels and responds it really makes the journey a lot easier. Oh, absolutely, and how we think. Exactly. You know, it gives us more ability to think right, mm -hmm. and the brain fog disappears. The brain fog, yes. You know, well, hold the brain fog. <laughs> We're gonna take a, a 60 second break right now, and when we'll come back, we'll clear that fog up for you, okay? <laughs> so stay tuned, hold on, guys. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha. I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back. So we have Judy Strickler here, former nurse, or I should say forever nurse, because even though she's retired from the office, she will continue to be a nurse of the world. And so we're so excited that you're here with us to share not only your knowledge, but your heart. And that's the whole premise of how to take your health back. And that's what we're all about, that we take little baby steps and we can find out how simple it is to take back the quality of life that we so desire. So our next slide will say, eat food, not too much. So remember now, locals, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. So we tell people we're not that we wanna be vegans or vegetarians, no. We just wanna eat more of the right things and it comes obviously from plants. So we want to say to people, eat plant strong and that's mm -hmm. that's our message mm -hmm. today pretty much is that's how yeah. we journey to that mm -hmm. so tell us how you found the simplest form on how we can take control of our health judy well through a lot of research and a lot of trial and error mm -hmm. um, i have found maybe five main things that will help you take your health back okay. so first of all exercise we know that's important right okay move your move every day no matter what it takes secondly mm -hmm. make sure you get your sleep seven to nine hours of sleep every night okay the research is now showing that uh, lack of sleep has something to do with the increase of Alzheimer's and dementia. So, yeah, <laughs> Wendy, you better make sure you get some sleep. We'll okay, I better not that. forget that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then we want to eat calorie density, and that means that you want to eat food that has the densest, uh, the densest food with the least calories. Mm -hmm. So if you ate like three tablespoons of oil, that would be like 500 calories. Well, if you ate 500 calories of potatoes or rice or vegetables, that mm -hmm. would fill up your stomach. It wouldn't even go in hardly. So we want to eat calorie dense food, food that has fiber and water always has to have it in there. And the other thing is we want to get rid of food addictions food-like addictions. Now, mm -hmm. we're all addicted to food. We have to eat to mm -hmm. live. Mm -hmm. But the pleasure trap is what gets us into the feed eating. So there's a difference between feed, eating something to fill you up, mm -hmm. and food that nourishes your body. So food does something to your for your body. Drugs do something to your body. Mm. So a lot of times the foods and the things we're putting in our body, whether it's uh, junk food, processed junk food, mm -hmm. uh, no vitamins, no nothing in it, um, alcohol, whatever it might be, that is affecting your body, harm, harming your body. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful about 
trying not to do that. It's like the hurricane. It's coming. Right. So do you want it to come faster? You want to it to hit your house without boarding it up and getting right. food? Right. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about for sure is food poisoning. Mm -hmm. Now, for a lot of people, they don't understand what that is. Dr. John McDougall has a picture book that you can download mm -hmm. and print, and it helps explain it. But food poisoning is not about salmonella, or it's not about E. coli. Food poisoning is about eating those foods that are harmful to you. And Dr. McDougall believes that food poisoning is caused by animal products and oil. Mm -hmm. Those two things are the main culprit that cause harm in our body. Mm -hmm. And so if I can help teach people how to eat, eat your food without putting all that in it, mm -hmm. I think that's very important. I also teach a batch cooking class where I teach you how to cook all the veg vegetables and, and prepare all the starches for a whole week in three hours. Mm. And if you want to add something else to that, you can. You know, in I'm sure where you came from, Wendy, you didn't have a big piece of meat. They used meat to flavor right. a big pot of soup. Right. And so it's quite different the way it is here now. Right, exactly. And, and when you process that meat, I mean, it's like I heard someone say one day, would you really eat a piece of steak with nothing raw? Would you just chew that up, really, just go out there and get that? Or do you need the salt and the seasoning, the oil and the grill? And, you know, mm -hmm. most people wouldn't eat it just a piece of chicken raw off the chicken, okay? Right. They right. would have to prepare it. Right. Right. So the main thing is not that you don't have to, you know, you decide what your true north is. Mm -hmm. For my family and I, we have pretty much limit our animal consumption and our mm -hmm. oil, right. but take steps towards that. Mm -hmm. So don't make the, the animal products the main part of your meal. If you want to eat that, make it just a flavoring. Right, exactly. exactly. Part of that. And when you eat all those other things, those, you know, the, the potatoes and the, and the squash, and the lettuce and, and the vegetables and the fruit, that all builds up your body. That mm -hmm. is helping your body get rid of the poisons from those other things. It's that detoxing it, yeah, right? That's why they're called antioxidants. That's right. It just that's helps you to get rid of that. That's of the toxins. Yeah. And so. You know, yeah. and you talk about um, Dr. McDougall. He had a really good start here in Hawaii. And uh, yes. it was um, um, noted on the, the documentary that he was featured on as well, Forks Over Knives. Yes. And by watching those sorts of documentaries, the truth. It really guides us to understand. So I always tell couples, families, it's a love story. So I say, grab your husband's hand, take, get your family, set them down, have a good bowl of skinny popcorn, a great <laughs> salad, and you know, just enjoy what the message is. And then after that, do you know Q and A mm -hmm. with the family because that to me is a great love story. Mm -hmm. Now, Judy, you take care of your husband, Daryl, and Daryl takes care of you by eating healthy. Mm -hmm. And then you travel and you visit Hawaii. Mm -hmm exactly how we should do it. But now, if we don't take care of each other, spouses or family members, then it either delays a, a trip or postpones a trip. And so we have choices. Choices. We have choices, but we all have to take baby steps towards mm -hmm. these choices. Mm -hmm. You know, like taking meats or lessen the amounts mm -hmm. of meats mm -hmm. that you have in your diet. I love meat, but I've made a, a, a focused effort not to cook it in my home, but when I go out, I'll mm -hmm. enjoy. Mm -hmm. But at home, I've never cooked pork beef or chicken yeah. in my home since I've retired. Yeah, and I'm the same way. Yeah. I might partake when I'm out, mm -hmm. but at home, we don't have that in our house. Right. And I love the thing that you just said, Wendy, about getting a movie like Forks Over Knife or What the Health. That's a love some story. Of those, if you just sit I, yes. down, I mean, listen to what they say and yes. then make a choice. Is, yes. Are you willing to take those steps? Right. Because good things will happen. Right. And and do it now when it's mm -hmm. a choice versus mm -hmm. it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. Honey, we got to change our lifestyle mm -hmm. because, no, honey, let's change our lifestyle because I want to travel with you around the world as long as we can. Absolutely. And I don't want to be pushed in a wheelchair or, you know, having a cane on your hand. I want to hold your hand. Sometimes I like to explain it this way that people, you know, eat, eat what they want to, the standard American diet, they drink, they whatever it might mm -hmm. be, and they don't think about getting sick because they think a doctor will fix them. It's like going up on a cliff mm. and falling off when you get sick. Instead, we would like you to build a fence up there right. so you never have to fall <laughs> off and an ambulance pick you up. I get it. You know? I get Hawaii, the visual. You know, I get it. Yeah. In Hawaii, you know about the cliffs. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. <laughs> okay, so you talked about the pleasure trap. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that and explain to us what is a pleasure trap. 
Yeah, the pleasure trap is the food addiction, mm -hmm. you know, and it could be something else. It could mm -hmm. be heroin, it could be anything like that. And you see some things listed there as mm -hmm. far as a food, pleasure trap, and I know you think it might be kind of silly. I, I talked about most of those things. On the bottom, I have sleep and exercise, because believe it or not, there's people that are addicted to exercise. They do too much. Some don't do any. <laughs> and there's some people that stay up all night and never get their sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's a very big problem. Mm. But one of the simplest ways to kind of remember what you should eat and what would be better for you is I tell people to get off of the sofas. Mm -hmm. So sofas stand for salt, oil, flour, right? Mm -hmm. Alcohol and sugar. Mm -hmm. And then limit the animal products as much as you can. So if you did that alone, mm -hmm. then it's not the starches that, that are bad for us, it's what we put on them. Right, You know, right. a baked potato with some steamed broccoli is delicious. Mm -hmm. There's some rice, mm -hmm. I love rice with beans, maybe corn, salsa, whatever. Right, right. There's nothing wrong with that. High Eating protein, as much as tastes good and cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, cheap and affordable, and, and it tastes really, really good. And there's so many ways that you can prepare it. And now that I've gone plant strong, mm -hmm. I have beans in my preparedness kit. So if there's that hurricane that does come to Hawaii, I have a whole container of beans and rice noodles, and I have plants that I grow on my balcony, and I have plant powders. So I'm prepared. Yes. So I'm not waiting for that hurricane to come. I'm doing, I'm proactively working on that. And so, so tell us a little bit about what is this you mentioned, Juice Plus, and what is plant powders and all of that? Well, I, when I discovered these plant powders, I was a school nurse in Lubbock, Texas, mm -hmm. and a PE coach came and asked me to listen to this cassette tape. Do you know what that is? It's a little white thing. Oh, I know. A little machine. I, and, okay. I'm not that young. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet there's people in there hey, like, what is that? So anyway, I took it home. She wanted to learn if, if it, she wanted me to listen to it mm -hmm. to see if it was something she could take. Mm -hmm. And I was not interested because she said it was food in a capsule, and I said, uh, no, just eat your food the way God made it, you're all good. And for her, I did her a favor, I listened to it. And by the time I got finished listening to that tape, I knew I would want my family to take this for their life. Mm. I knew it. I went back to school the next day and bought enough for our whole family, and we've been taking this now for 21 years. And the nice thing about that, you saw the towers on the, the slide that was up there. Mm -hmm. They also have now towers that you can grow your own produce right, right on your patio. That's you know? what we do, and we had that guy last week. He oh. came and talked to us, to, uh, to us about the tower gardens, and it was amazing. It is. So fresh food right at your fingertips. It is. And um, can, again, cheap. Yeah, very <laughs> affordable. And, 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 and right? no GMOs. And, and no and question no... marks because I know I grew it, he grew it, and there's no chemicals no and non GMO. Chemicals. And it's like when I need it, I eat it. Mm -hmm. And you know, like you, like I, I travel a lot. Mm -hmm. So I need that convenience. Mm -hmm. When I'm home, I want it. And I don't Absolutely. want to have to throw things out and waste because I don't want to waste because it costs money. Yes. And by growing my own, I save a whole lot of money. Right. And you can yeah. grow what you like to eat. Right. So right. That's the way mm -hmm. you use that. So. so, real quickly, Judy, just tell us um, what's your passion mission? What are you doing now that you're retired and you're sharing this information of health? My Really, I, I feel like I get up every morning and I have a ministry mm -hmm. that I have to go out and save people's lives by teaching them how to eat better. Right. Because I know as a nurse, I saw what happened in the hospital. As a school nurse, I saw a five-year-old that needed five medications every day, right. and I knew that was probably killing him. And wow, look at this. You were, where is this? This is in Africa. My husband and I went to Africa in 2006 and Planet Gardens for a Dream of Africa with Bruce Wilkinson, and that was a real eye-opener. And oh, it wow. was, it really made an impact on my life. What a full life you've had, Judy. I mean, you're retired, yep. but you're not stopping. Not stopping. So keep on going. You're here to make a difference Absolutely. and change people's lives. And that's what you're going to do every day. And as you come to Hawaii and you share your message of aloha, and when you return back to your home, Absolutely. take our aloha with you. Thank you. So we thank you and Daryl for being here with us in Hawaii, thank sharing you. your great love for what you're doing. So for now, everyone, aloha.